Passive Infrared Sensor or PIR Sensor for short are nowadays really popular when it comes to detecting motion. You can even get one of those inexpensively from eBay or Amazon. In this video I will combine such a sensor with my TC35 GSM module to build an alarm system which detects motion and sends you a SMS when an intruder tries to steal your stuff. Let's get started. First of all, let's take a look at the sensor. It requires 5 volt to operate and outputs a 33 volt signal as soon as it detects something moving in its range. We can adjust the on time of the 33 volt signal and the average distance of the view fields with those potentiometers. But they are a nightmare to turn, so let's remove those and replace them with easier to turn 200 kilo ohm potentiometers. I just soldered three wires to those and used a bit of shrinking tube to protect the connections. Those wires then replace the solder joints of the old potentiometers. Now the sensor works great and we can have a look at the enclosure for the system. I used this grey project box which you usually find when you do electrical work around your house. A big advantage of this box were those rubber seals. It was quite easy to cut a hole for my sensor with my rotary tool and it was also super simple to push small holes into those with a screwdriver. This way I was able to mount my two switches which I use for the test mode option and the power input. And of course I soldered wire to those before installing them. I also mounted my sensor potentiometers to the case by turning the rubber seals around and repeating the mounting process like I did with my switches. The sensor and TC35 GSM module got secured inside the case with hot glue. And make sure to insert the SIM card for the GSM module before gluing it to the case. Lastly, I poked another hole in the seals to push my wire for the siren inside the case, which will later create an annoying loud sound during the intruder alert. Mains power will also enter through this hole later on. Alright, all the parts are mounted and it is time to take a look at the schematic. It looks complicated, but bear with me. The brain of the organization is a cheap Arduino Mini. You can get those for around $2 from eBay. But you will need some extra female headers and an FTDI breakout at the end to program it. Moving on to the siren. As you can see it uses 12 volt power. How to get 12 volts from 5 volts? A simple step up converter can do this. I connected it to my bench power supply and adjusted the output to 12 volts. Now I can solder my siren to this output and the input connects to my N channel MOSFET and 5V to switch this thing on and off with my digital pin 10. I also soldered a green LED with current limiting resistor directly onto the Arduino. This will help me later during test mode to calibrate the potentiometers for the sensor. Now I can complete the wiring by connecting the TC35, the MOSFET, the test switch and the motion sensor to the Arduino. It really was a chaotic wiring, but in this build it is more about function than looks. And if you want to build something similar, then always follow the schematic. It gives you all the information you need. Lastly, I created a 5 volt and ground power point by soldering all the power wires of all the components together. I can hook those two points up to my bench power supply to test the whole system. And apparently there is no short circuit and the current consumption seems normal. Awesome! To make things a bit more convenient later on, I also made small labels for the potentiometers and the switches. Since the hardware should work fine, it was time to upload the software. I kept the whole code very simple and only used one external timer library which you need to download before trying to upload it to the Arduino. I created two modes which are selected by the test switch. During test mode the green LED lights up whenever the motion sensor's output is turned on. 
This way you can easily calibrate the range of view without triggering any alarms. Once we finish the calibration, we can switch over to alarm mode. Firstly, the system waits 30 seconds to give you some time to leave the room or something like that. Then it screams twice at the end to inform you that it is now active. As soon as it detects that the output of the motion sensor got activated twice during 18 seconds, it starts the alarm process. The GSM module then connects to the mobile network and sends you an intruder alert SMS to your phone. And as soon as you receive the SMS, the siren starts yelling and will hopefully scare off the intruder. This goes on for around 20 seconds before the siren turns off. The system then waits 30 minutes before restarting the alarm mode. After I was sure the whole software worked fine, we went to the new location for the system. We did some basic measurements and drilled four holes, one for each corner. We inserted the dowels and secured the whole box with screws. Now it is time for power. I used this 5 volt 3 amp power supply, which is a bit of an overkill but works great in retrospective. We also used blue tape to isolate the power supply's metal body from the inner electronics. And no, this thing will not overheat, because it only requires bigger current peaks while sending an SMS and turning on the siren. We connected the power wires to the supply inside the case and closed the whole system. The very last step was to secure the siren to the wall with a couple of dowels and screws. And it is done! A relatively cheap and easy to remake SMS alarm system. If you liked this project, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. That would really help me out. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Google+. Stay creative and I'll be back.